All right, class, for this video, I'm showing you, we're gonna go over how to draw uh, the foundation for the design of your house that you have been working on for quite a while now, a couple of weeks. We have done the floor plan. We have done, added all the symbols, dimensions, and all that. We have done um, the roof plan on that. Uh, now we're gonna do the foundation and then the elevations. Foundation, we're gonna do it um, slab on grade foundation, the typical one here in the valley, um, where we're gonna have some footings. Uh, first of all, all the perimeter of the house, and then we're gonna use some of these walls they cut in to continue our footing there. Okay, you wanna do that to save some, uh, save some, it will be easier to do at the job site and also save you some money and, and material. And then we're gonna more or less see if, if the span is too big uh, from footing to footing, then we might have to add another one in the middle. All right, so I'm ready to go. You put your plan at the bottom. Uh, we're gonna draw it quarter scale. I already put the, the uh, tracing paper on top. If it looks a little bit uh, different on your on the screen, I'm using a different color of tracing paper. So that might be why it looks a little bit different, but it still works, all right? So what we're gonna do first, uh, and this is, shouldn't, shouldn't take that long for this, um, for this, for to do the foundation, okay? Our footings are gonna be, the space between the footings are, are gonna be uh, 12 inches a foot, and then the depth, um, well that wouldn't have, wouldn't have to include it here, that will be on the, on the, on the section, foundation section, usually they go down 18 inches, uh, or actually, yeah, about, no, not 18 inches. 18 inches in the in the middle or in the and the ones inside. I think it's two feet or two six on the exterior. And again, that'll be a call for from the structure engineer how deep they're they're gonna go. All right. So first thing we're gonna do, <clears throat> we're gonna have our tracing paper. We're gonna go all around the, the the house first, the perimeter of the house. All right. To show actually, well, let's do it like this. I'm gonna later. I'm gonna cover something different. Uh, but for now, for the purpose of the assignment, we're gonna do it like this. And what I wanted to uh, go over, and we're gonna go over it later on, once you start drawing it in the computer, it, and uh, we're gonna discuss about the um, brick ledge. But we'll discuss that later. All right, so we're gonna go all around where the wall is, right? Because that's gonna be where we're gonna have our, um, our footing, all the weight of the, of the house is coming down on the wall. So we need to put right a footing all of the perimeter of our structure. Okay, so I'm drawing a line uh, the way outside. Okay, and what this is gonna do, again, uh, when you see a foundation, we discussed in the video, or I discussed in the video that I previously, previously uh, uploaded. Uh, when you see the foundation plan, it's like if you were seeing um, what's there, if it's, in, the, in our case, it's, it's um, slab on grade, we only see concrete, but, so that's why I'm showing this outer line. Okay, it's showing where the concrete ends. So imagine you're seeing this right now, uh, where, where you're drawing. Imagine it's just a piece of concrete. Okay, it's a piece of concrete, and what you're seeing is the edge of the concrete. But underneath, we're gonna have the, 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 the footings uh, they go deep into the ground, and that's where you have your, your, your rebar and your concrete grabs into the soil, and that's what gives us the stability and holds the weight coming down. So this, is, this shows the edge of the concrete, right? But now on the exterior, all around, there's a footing that goes all around, right? That holds the weight coming down. If we're seeing, I'm gonna draw here on the side. If we're seeing from section view, let's say right here, uh, we have this lab like this, Right? And then we have the footing going in like that. Usually they cut like this. Okay, so this is our slab, four inches. And then here's a the footing. There's a rebar and there's stirrups like that. Okay, they're cutting that way. So all this is concrete. Okay, so if we're seeing it from the top, this line represents that right there. And I hope you can see this, let me see should be able to yes you can okay so this right here is seeing it from the top this edge 
is represented right here. Now this is what we need to represent because on the top we don't see it, it's underneath, right? Our eye is right here. So we see just a slab, which is what we're seeing. This is the edge. We do see that, right? Because the dirt is right here. But this, the footing itself, we need to show it. And that's gonna be with a hidden line. And then we had said that the distance from here to here, it's uh, 12 inches. Okay, so we're gonna go all around 12 inches. So we're gonna come in. We did a quarter scale, and I'm gonna do this fast. You can take more time, because I don't wanna waste too much of your time. So we're gonna go from the edge, come in 12 inches. And I'm just gonna eyeball it, all right? But in your case, again, you have to measure 12 inches in. Okay, so you can show it where it goes. And the way you're gonna draw it, you're just gonna, you're gonna do a hidden line because from the top, you cannot see, uh, you can't see this, right? From the top, you can't see it, it's underneath. So you're gonna show that with a hidden line. So we're gonna do a hidden line like that all around. Same thing here. Now in your case, make sure you measure the 12 inches. I'm gonna eyeball it because I don't wanna spend too much time uh, on the video. All right, so that's right there. So 12, go like that. Same thing here. Now it's a perimeter, right? So make sure this connect. Like that. So we went all around. Now I'm doing, again, I'm doing it fast, but you take your time and make sure you do a little bit like Now, in a bit, I'm gonna take away the plan at the bottom so we can actually see them. So we have solid line, which is the perimeter. And then we have this hidden line showing this part of the footing that we can't see from the top. So we're showing um, that there's a footing all the way around, all right? All the way around. So. Um, okay, so that's that's what we're showing here. Now, if we do we did something like this, we, we're showing that we have a, a, a foot in here, a foot in here, and then all of this from this point to this point, it's a four in, four inch slab with a rebar. Okay, that's a long span. Okay, so if for if, if I for example if I use this pencil as an example, and I'm holding it here, right? This I'm holding it from this end. Imagine this is the footing. This is a footing, I'm holding it from here, this end and this end. If you put pressure right in the middle, more than likely it's gonna crack because the span is too long. So to prevent that, of course, I need to have supported here, here, and then maybe something in the middle so that the span can be supported. So now the weight is gonna come down between these two, right? So if I put pressure here, it's gonna be a lot harder to break than if I just hold it from here and put pressure in the middle. So this is the same idea on your foundation. On, 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 on slab on, and also, that also with the joist. Uh, you wanna make sure the span that you have there, the weight coming down, it's, it's not gonna crack your foundation in this case. So here, the span is too big, I think it's 40 some feet. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take advantage of this cuts that go in here. See how the, the house is coming out like this, and then it cuts in. So we're gonna, when they're cutting on the, on the, the, the uh, they're doing the trenches, they come like this, they'll come like this, they're gonna come like this, and they're gonna cut this way. Well, I'm gonna take advantage that they're cutting in like this, going up like here, so I'm gonna put a footing right there, all the way across, all right? Take advantage of that. And I'm gonna do the same thing right here. They're coming in this way, they're gonna come in, and then they're gonna go to the right. Well, I'm gonna, uh, when they, they're they cutting, I'm gonna put a, uh, uh, they're gonna put a trench right here and follow that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, that's now we're gonna have the span is from here to here. It's a long span, but now I'm gonna have two footings here that they're gonna support. So now it's gonna have footing from here to here, span of, uh, of the slab, span from here to here, slab, span from here, span from here to here, slab. So now it's gonna have, it's gonna be harder for it to to uh, to break. Now this is a rule of thumb. Uh, in this case. Uh, if the structural engineer is the one designing it, then you don't have to worry too much because they're the ones that are gonna say, okay, you need to have them here or, or there. And like I showed you or told you about last time, 
Also, it depends uh, when we went to the field trip. It depends if you're gonna have a, a load bearing wall. Maybe you have a load bearing wall. Well, on this one, we got lucky because we have a wall right here. So whoever, if somebody wants to do something with, um, with this wall and support something on top, then we know that there's a footing right underneath. So this wall, is, it, it, should, it could be able to carry some weight, extra weight, uh, on this wall that is right here, that, this right here, right? Because the wall, the, the weight is going to transfer down to the footing. If this footing was some, or this wall was somewhere somewhere here, then you know you can you have to think about it twice because the weight coming down might not be. Uh, of course, of the structure it should be fine, but if you want to add more stuff to it, let's, let's say remodel and, and add another room on the top, then if it's if it's if the wall was right here, then that might crack. But since the wall is right on top of the of the footing. Okay, so that it gives you an extra support. Okay, so we got lucky in both. Is then we can we can provide support here and we can provide support on this wall. So in other words, if whoever they want to remodel this house, they can actually maybe put a, a second floor on top of this area, and we have weight coming down and we have footing supporting that. Okay, so uh, okay, I tend to go on a tangent, so sorry for that. But we're gonna add a footing right there, and then also. Now in this case, we have to do all both of them are going to be hidden. All right, so we have a one there and one there. One there. I'm going to check how what what's the span in between them. Uh, it's about uh, 17 feet. Okay, it might be too long. It might be too big of a span. Um, but for our design, we're going to leave it like this. Okay, but it might just to be FYI. I think it's between 12 and 15 feet. 15 feet rule of thumb again on the span and again this is going to depend the engineer is going to design design that uh, if you think of it logically if the span gets bigger then we need more uh more um the the, the slab instead of four maybe six and the rebar the, that's going in between maybe not as small maybe bigger I mean, instead maybe instead of a four uh, six number instead of number four rebar maybe it should be number six so it's just to provide that extra support on the span. It's like, for example, again, taking away the pencil. If this is gonna be the span, right? And uh, if I click on this one, it might break. So what can I use? Well, if I use a different type of pencil, which is bigger, then it's gonna give me the extra support. Or if I use, a, not a pencil, but I use a, 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 a metal rod, then it's gonna provide the support. So same thing here. You have the span. If the span has to stay there, then you might do some, have to do something with the concrete to provide that support so it doesn't crack. Right, and again, this, that's a call for the for the structure engineer. But as long as you have a holistic idea of how, how it works, you should be good. All right. So now that we have it here, and we're gonna leave them there. Now, in your design, you prop you, you should have this this here because you have the same shell. Uh, so you're gonna have them right right where I have them. I don't know if you have walls there. That's something that you have to have to uh, check. Um, what I'm gonna do also, now notice I'm not doing the porch and the, the patio, those are gonna be separate. Usually they, they pour first uh, where the house is gonna be and then after or later they pour the, the sidewalks and the porches and all that stuff. They, they're, they're separate, okay? Because not there's not too much weight coming down. Just the roof, um, usually. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now we have this span, let's say we have this span covered, now we have to worry about this one, right? From here to here, that's a long span, it might crack. Same thing here, same thing here. So what I'm gonna do, just for this plan, I'm gonna take advantage of this cut right here too. So I'm gonna bring this one like this, and then this one like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take advantage when they're cutting, and just imagine that when they're cutting, they have the machine, they're going all around, they're gonna come like this, go like that, and they already have it, This they have already this trench, just might as well continue it all the way through. Okay, and then put it like that. Now, if, if, if uh, the best thing to do also it's when they did when, when if you know someone which i think everybody knows someone that does construction uh, stop by when whenever they're preparing the foundation and stop by and talk to them and ask questions like why this why the span why the rebar um so you can get an idea you know if you have some questions learn from the people that that do it every single day so again be resourceful Right, so that's gonna take care of this. Now, in some instances, you don't wanna do that. For example, this might be one, but I'm gonna leave it like this, because then, uh, if you think of it logically, you have a foot in here, a foot in here. So, this piece of, of, um, 
this section right here of, of the span of your um, slab is gonna be very, very rigid. It's like if I'm holding the pencil from meter here, it's gonna be very hard for me to, if I press it, very hard for me to crack it right there because the span is too small. Now the other question might arise then, if that's the case, I want a, a very strong foundation, can I just put them like every five feet? You could, but then you're overkilling it. You're spending too much um, money on your foundation and you don't need maybe that type of rigid foundation for the house that you have. So it's a balance, all right? So, because uh, have at, ha, students have asked me, well, can I just, instead of having a, at, a, at 17, can I just put it on my very 10 feet? You know, that, that covers, uh, make sure that it makes sure that the, the foundation is sturdy enough. That, that's possible, but then you have to think about cost. That's gonna, it's a lot of rebar going in, a lot of uh, labor and concrete, and it's gonna get expensive. So it, there here is where you have to balance and make sure you know what you're doing um, so that you, you only use the materials that you need to use for the use of the foundation, right? So just keep that in mind. Uh, again, when you take residential and, and commercial, you're gonna talk more about this in, in, in more in depth. So now that we have this covered, we have that covered, so it seems we have this covered, so it seems that here we have like a big span like that. So just for the for for um, just for the purpose of the project, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a footing in between these two. I have a, a, a footing right here and a footing right here. I have a span of a, of a slab like this. So right, I'm gonna put right 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 in the middle. I'm gonna put one. So I'm gonna uh, okay. And again, I'm just eyeballing this here. Let's say from from footing to footing, it's about twenty. 21 feet, so I'm gonna put one, uh, let's see, yeah, somewhere here. All right. And again, it should be 12 inches. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna eyeball it because I don't wanna take too much time, which I think I already did. So I'm gonna put one here and one here. Okay, so now you, you have, if you can see the grid, and I'll right now take the, the paper on, uh, underneath uh, uh, up so you can see it. And then I'll explain more. And then for for, for your uh, porches, all you have to do is just trace it and then add a footing. Now these footings are, are, are a lot less deep. Okay, and then, so again, do this one here. If you have it the way I have it, or wherever you have a porch, and then have a footing separate from that. They're gonna probably pour those later later on with the sidewalks, like this. And then of course here you have a drop, and here you have a drop. All right, so let me take the paper on the bottom so, we, so it, it will be easier for us to see what I have drawn. So hopefully, let me turn this, maybe this will work. I don't know how, there you go. Okay, so this is what you have drawn. The exterior of the house, solid, in that slab that we're watching, and then we did the trenches. So we went all inside, a 12 inch inside, and added that one. And then we took advantage of the cuts that go in, cuts that go in, and then follow that through, follow that through, follow that through. Once you do that, then you have to think of the spans. I, I We might need one here, I'm gonna leave it like that, but we might. But you know, for the purpose of the, of the lecture, I'm gonna leave it like that. If I put one here, there's gonna be two small the span between these two so it, but again there's a lot of concrete and material going into it so the cost is going to go higher so for the reason i'm going to leave it like that so we're, now right that we're, that we're looking at it what we have is uh it's the, the exterior footing which is this all right those are going to be deeper two or two six and then the ones the interior ones are considered like these these are the interior like that those are gonna be a lot less they're not might might be too much support coming down now again like what, what I said if this wall is gonna be load bearing wall and you know or this too you're gonna have a second story so it's gonna hold us the, the the weight from the roof from the second story uh, second story and first door story I'm sorry uh, of the house the weight coming down then you might want to make maybe this deep as these so you can hold the weight and again it's just uh, uh, thinking it think up think on it logically, but the structure engineer is gonna make that decision, okay? So from here, you need to mark your drops. So here we have a drop, um, and I think you, have, you should have the symbols 
on the standards menu from your basic AutoCAD class. Okay, so there's a drop symbol. There's a drop symbol, go ahead and add them. Okay, and then we need to uh, dimension it. Okay, so we're gonna dimension from the edge to edge, and then we're gonna dimension where our footings are. In this case, we have a footing here, and right in the middle of the footing, mark it, and right there. And then same thing here. I'm gonna go like this. Again, use your, your pencils. I'm just making it fast. So we have a dimension right here. So we have to give the distance so they know, okay, I, I need to go X amount of uh, feet so I can do this trench. And then from this trench, X amount this way so I can do that trench. So here's where you're gonna have your dimensions. And do this all around, okay? So when you dimension it, you're dimensioning the trenches, okay? Like where? Uh, where is this trench located? Where is this trench located? Where is this trench located? And so on and so forth. Okay, so they can, before, when they start cutting, they know exactly where to put them. So dimension it all around. And then go ahead and put your, your plumbing fixtures, the ones that require um, um, uh, drainage or sewer. Go ahead and include them. Don't dimension those, just put them where they go. For example, in our case, somewhere here, um, it's somewhere there, I forgot where it was in the kitchen. So let's say, uh, I'm gonna eyeball, I'll eyeball this. Let's say my, um, I have a, and I forgot if it's there. I'm gonna say that maybe I have a, the tub or it was right there. I'm gonna draw it. And maybe my, um, actually I don't know where it was. Actually it should be at this side, if anything. Maybe my toilet was right here. So I'm gonna draw that. Okay, so just show them where they go. Don't dimension them. Have the, the master plumber that's gonna work on the house make sure to put, for him to do calculations and put the drainage where they need to go before they pour the concrete, of course, because they're gonna do that before they pour the concrete, okay? So do go ahead and, 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 uh, and work on your foundation. We're doing a slab on grade, uh, dimension it, dimension where the trenches are, and so you're gonna do the, the first, the, the actual footprint of the house, and then you're gonna do the patios and porches if you have any, and they're gonna be separate, okay? And then usually this, you wanna hatch them just to show that it's a different elevation, that it's a drop, okay? So visually, you know, this is my slab. Here, there's a drop right there, and usually it's three and a half inch, three and a half inch drop. Also, what I want to do, it's put here a note, put the elevation marker, make it a little bit bigger. I'm sorry, this is not a good eraser. Elevation marker. And then, actually, well, you could put here the note also how high do you want this this um, uh, the top of the of the slab should should be, and here you can put like 18 inches above top of curb or top of center of street. Okay, so imagine the street is over here or the curb is over here. So if the, the the curb height is this high, right? The street, the curb. We have discussed that in the previous uh, on the when we did a site plan. The curb is right there, so your foundation has to be 18 inches above that. All right, so in case of floods, there's, I mean, it takes, it's gonna take a while for the water to get into your, to your, to your, the top of your foundation, where is, and it's not gonna have any leakage to go inside your, your house. So you might wanna include that one too. Okay, so this is gonna be your foundation. Go ahead and, and, and draw it, scan it, and submit it on, uh, through Blackboard. All right, so have some fun.